I wanted to be an academic, but I was really drawn to, you know, a writer like Real Marcus uh-huh. or um, Camille Paglia, who, sure. you know, just write in this um, slightly like aggro way that are mm-hmm. all constantly surprising you. Yeah. Um, and I had a professor. I wonder what she's going to say next. Yeah, exactly. I had a professor at um, in graduate school and she, Helen Vandler, the like brilliant poetry critic, and she said the most interesting thing about poetry is that the next word can always be anything, mm. you know? And so in that white space, you're in a moment of total vertigo and it's going to land the next one. And your responsibility, if you're writing poetry, is to take advantage of each of those sec- moments mm. of freedom. So there is a, a time where, I, you know, if a sentence starts to write me, you know, I try to like get back into that absolute freedom. It's like this libertarian, you know, yeah. giant universe of of op- opportunity in between sentences, in between uh, words. And I definitely don't get it right all the time, but thank you. All right. So here is an excerpt from Magic and Loss, The Internet as Art by Virginia Heffernan. Go okay. Ahead. The internet is the great masterpiece of human civilization. As an artifact, it challenges the pyramid, the aqueduct, the highway, the novel, the newspaper, the nation state, the Magna Carta, Easter Island, Stonehenge, agriculture, the feature film, the automobile, the television, the telegraph, the telephone, the Chanel suit, the airplane, the pencil, the book, the printing press, the radio, the realist painting, the abstract painting, the birth control pill, the washing machine, the skyscraper, the elevator, and cooked meat. As an idea, it rivals monotheism. Just as in Nietzsche's scheme, man created science, which in turn killed God, analog culture, books, clocks, film, industrial machines, the compasses and timers of scientific method, created digital culture. And now digital culture has superseded it. It was quick, the supersession, and now it's over. But where are we? Fascinating, very well done. So. Um I could see you dropped us in on the Chanel bag. It's like you get everybody. Yes. You, did, you did a really good technique there, which is you've got us all nodding about the great moments in history. <laughs> and then you insert your own moment, which is the, the <laughs> Chanel bag. Right, which was like, I was on the fence about that one. I like it, though. You know what it shows? It's like you're, you're, it's people that you need to be paying attention. Like, yes, the car, the pen, yeah. cooked meat, agriculture. These things all were transformative in human history. Yeah. But in your mind, the internet surpasses all of those in a way, or yeah. is equal to those? Um, you know, I would say it, you know, it challenges, it rivals. And yeah. this is... An it, argument can be made for each. Yeah. You know, like you could really have a, a, an actual argument about the car versus the internet, which is more transformative. That's right. Um, partly I wanted to, um, especially with this passage, um, issue a provocation. Mm. You know, I um, there are a lot of claims, serious claims made in in books about technology that are, you know, only a company with this mu- this many us- this much user acquisition in the first year can be successful, you need to be profitable and two quarters you need to be profitable in two years. And I didn't want to be as there's a lot of opportunity for sophistry, for deceit, and for, um, you know, for obsolescence in a book like that. Yeah. So I wanted to make claims instead that engage the reader because my love of Web 2.0 started with YouTube, started with a kind of video where you'd throw it down almost like a gauntlet, and back would come video responses, comments, and I loved that back and forth. So there's nothing better to me than when, you know, if I read this passage to a group when someone, you know, raises their hand and says, cooked meat, now come on, or the yeah. Magna Carta, you're just really talking, you're on holy territory there. Yeah, I mean, for me, that moment was agriculture, because if you just think yeah. about agriculture... That was the time. I mean, no agriculture, no free time, no ability. I mean, we were hunter-gatherers. We really didn't have the time to think about mythology, philosophy, yeah. po- politics. You know Magna Carta if you don't have the ability to have an upper class to sit around and think, right? Yeah. And, 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 well, there's you know, a little bit big of— Big buildings. I mean, things get a little trippy here like they always do. I mean, with you, I'm yeah. sure it's you don't have a problem kind of going to mysticism. But yeah. there are um, a bunch of classicists, so studies of ancient, uh, ancient and Roman Greece— who um, th- believed that there was were self digitizing communities before digital? So you know, thousands of years before what does it mean? digitization. Well, that's a good question. But zeros and ones as um, a feature, obviously, of mathematics, but wow. a way of organizing thought mm. and a way of organizing abstraction, even Got around it. like early accounting um, and early philosophy. So you know. Even Platonic philosophy partakes of some of the logic of computer code. That computer code may have been with us Mm. well before electronic circuitry.
This is my favorite ad read on the planet. I love Audible. I've been an Audible customer for a decade, and I have hundreds of audiobooks. Yes, you heard that right. Literally hundreds of audiobooks. And, you know, I like to hike. You guys see pictures of me on my social media hiking. Sometimes I go hiking with my daughter. A lot of times I decide to walk from meeting to meeting in the city. I leave a little extra time, half an hour, 45 minutes, and I'm in the car, right? You're driving, going down to Palo Alto, coming back to the city, stopping everywhere in between doing my business. And when I do that and I'm on the treadmill or the elliptical or the rowing machine, I like to get smarter. I like to be more worldly and audible is my way to do that. I have uh, the Platinum offering, which is two books a month. You get Dozens of books a year. And, you know, I've told you about some books I've been um, listening to, The Man Who Knew Infinity, uh, The Hobbit, which I listened to with my daughter, Building Great Sentences, which you probably see in my work. I've been doing these really long, complicated compound sentences, and it's really helped me. I'm doing an Increase Your Vocabulary book right now from The Great Lessons. And Smarter, Faster, Better was my last pick. But I have one out of left field. And I'm going to tell you my technique on Audible. I go to audible.com and I look at what's best selling and I look in categories that maybe I'm weak in or maybe I don't have as much exposure to. One of those is science. I need to be up on science. And sometimes I feel, you know, a little self-conscious. Maybe I don't know a lot of the classics. Maybe I don't know a lot of the things I should know. And I saw this book, Sapiens, and it had over 4,000 reviews and it had four and a half stars. And so I'm always looking for that when I'm, when I'm looking through the best sellers, when I'm looking through the highest ranked, I'm looking for two things. One, a lot of reviews and a high rating. And then I go read the reviews and the reviews on Audible are amazing. There's so many super fans like me on there and I don't take the time to review books. So I feel kind of guilty about that, but I will draft off of the people who do. And Sapiens is a 15-hour book, and I'm in, I'm, I'm in chapter 6 of 21 right now, and I am riveted, like so riveted by this book, Sapiens, which is about humans and how there were multiple types of humans on the planet concurrently, and how we domesticated animals and how we domesticated wheat or how wheat domesticated us and how we were hunter-gatherers. And it just explains the history and the evolution of humans, and it really relates back to today and people you know, uh, people's own happiness today and how we're evolving. This book is amazing. I literally was in my garage. I parked and I stayed in my car for 15 minutes. I couldn't stop listening to it. And there was a great feature in Audible that I um, discovered about a year ago. It's the sleep timer. So when I'm going to go to bed, I have sometimes I have a hard time sleeping, right? We all have a hard time because we keep looking at our damn screens. We keep doing Twitter or Facebook and, you know, looking at things in our f social feed. Here's a better strategy. You go to Audible, you get a really great book. You put on the sleep timer for 15 minutes. Then you fall asleep listening to a great book. And if you're still awake, you put it on another 15 minutes. If you fall asleep and you think you missed the last five minutes, when you wake up in the morning, you just rewind five minutes and you listen to the, the text over again or whatever. This is what I've been doing and it works great for me. Um, you own your books. It's not a streaming service. That would suck if you didn't own the books. You own the books, um, which is great because my, my wife and my daughter also listen to books on our account and... Um, I also can listen to them now on the uh, Alexa. So I have the um, Amazon Echo, and I'm like, Alexa, play this audio book from Audible, and it does it. It's great. Um, I love reading books, but, you know, my eyes get tired, and a lot of times I have to have my eyes on the road. Self-driving cars are not here yet. So Audible is the perfect solution. I am a huge fan of Audible. Go to audible.com slash twist and get your 30-day trial membership. And I really, I, I got to tell you, like, I literally want to stop reading right now and stop the episode and go read Sapiens because I am loving this book, A Brief History of Humankind. And it's not brief. It's 15 hours. And where do you get like a value like that for 10 bucks to get 15 hours? It's, it's unbelievable. It's less than a dollar an hour. Um, so go ahead and check out Sapiens. I love it. And I'm uh, looking for some people to talk to it about. So if you're a friend of mine and you plan on having dinner or lunch with me, please read the book so we can talk about it. Go ahead and go to audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist, and download my book of the week for free by signing up at audible.com slash twist. Go get Sapiens for free. It's on your Uncle Jason. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. I could talk about Audible all day, and I frequently do. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. 